it comes to rock and roll mysteries, there are few that stand out like the death of Iron Butterfly bassist Philip Taylor Kramer. Kramer's story began on a rock and roll stage, but ended tragically. What happened to this musician turned scientist is a mystery with a heart wrenching twist, and it lingers without resolution. You may have loved it, you may have hated it, but in 1969, if you owned a radio, you couldn't have ignored it. Iron Butterflies in Agata de Vida was a huge success, but sudden fame and non-stop touring would prove to be a bad combination for Iron Butterfly, and in 1972, they split up. But just two years after the band's breakup, an enthusiastic bassist and singer named Philip Taylor Kramer convinced Iron Butterfly to reunite. Drummer Ron Bushy credits Kramer with motivating them to record again. Dropping his first name, Philip, Taylor Kramer decided to change more than his name. He kicked the music habit and went in an entirely new direction, moving from rock and roll to rocket science. After Taylor got his electrical engineering degree, it was around the time that aerospace was just booming. Taylor went to work for a team that designed the inertial guidance system on the MX missile. Taylor's inspiration came from his father, with whom he had worked on physics projects his entire life. As a physics professor, Taylor's father struggled for 30 years to do what was considered impossible, to communicate or send information through gravity waves. Taylor, who by now had become a computer genius, took his father's theories one step further. Remarkably, he was close to putting the final touches on this new form of communicating, sending messages literally through space. He was about to unveil these secrets to the world. We were working towards trying to find something faster than the speed of light. Something that would totally uh, revolutionize the way we communicate today and travel. To put that in a nutshell, we're talking beam me up Scotty. That's it. As Taylor came closer to the answers he was searching for, he became totally consumed and distracted, working endless hours, depriving himself of sleep. He hadn't slept for probably 10 days to two weeks before his disappearance. When you're sleep deprived, and as my brother was, I think that he just mentally got where it, things were very um, stressful for him. No one knows if what happened next was a result of his mental state or of something more sinister. On February 12, 1995, Philip Taylor Kramer took a routine trip to Los Angeles International Airport to pick up a friend. But before the friend even deboarded the plane, Kramer mysteriously vanished from the airport. No one saw Taylor Kramer at LAX, but a parking record proves he was there. He signed an IOU to pay the $3 fee he didn't have with him and drove away. During the next 45 minutes, Taylor made several calls from his cell phone. He called his wife, his father, his friends, and he told all of them the same thing. He said, Bush, it's Taylor. I love you more than life itself, Bush. And he hung up. At 11.59 a.m., Taylor made one last call, a call to 911. Hello, can I help you? Yes, this is Philip Taylor Kramer. Uh-huh. This is 911, can I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I'm going to kill myself. Okay, what is your name? Hello? Hello? That was the Hello? last communication we had from him, and it was my brother's voice. Uh, I've heard the tape, and it was definitely my brother's voice. No one ever saw Philip Taylor Kramer alive again. But to Taylor's father, Ray, the 911 message was not exactly what it seemed. Well, Taylor had told me a long time before there was people giving him problems. They wanted what he was doing. And uh, he didn't want to give it up. And several of them had threatened me. And... Uh, he told me, he says, if, if I ever say I'm going to kill myself, do it.
Don't you believe it. He says, I'm going to be needing help. No suicide note. No body. No van. In spite of that, and of the forewarning Taylor gave his father, the FBI believed he committed suicide. His family and friends thought otherwise. When I think of my brother as committing suicide, I can't picture him doing it. And my brother would not have left his family. He did a thousand sit-ups in the morning. Nobody's going to kill themselves and do a thousand sit-ups first. The Kramers grasped at any bit of hope they were offered, but their hopes were dashed countless times over the years. Only one thing was certain. Taylor Kramer and his unique scientific knowledge and research had vanished. He had been working on a revolutionary method of transporting information and matter through space, a discovery his family believed was so valuable that Kramer had reason to fear for his safety. When Kramer mysteriously vanished during a trip to Los Angeles airport, those fears may have been realized. The only evidence left behind were a series of phone calls, some to family, some to friends, and one to 911. On the afternoon of May 29, 1999, some of their questions were finally answered. The Kramers received incredible news that both brought them relief and broke their hearts. In a canyon a few miles away from Los Angeles Airport, hikers stumbled upon a van. Inside the van were human remains. After a few agonizing days, dental records proved beyond question that the body found in the van was that of Philip Taylor Kramer. One part of the mystery was solved, but another was only beginning. We were under a lot of hope that possibly my brother was alive somewhere or that maybe someday we would see him again. But now it opens up more questions and we need to know what happened to my brother. A few days after the grisly discovery, his sister Kathy visited the place where her lost brother had finally been found. This isn't what they would call a suicide cliff. You don't necessarily die going off. There were some teenagers that had stolen a car and they were trying to dispose of the evidence and went down and actually got out with just cuts and scratches. So this, this is not the type of a mountainside that would guarantee that someone could die. This raises the question, did Taylor Kramer drive off the cliff to his death or was he driven there already dead? The only thing that this has closed is chapter one of suspense because the suspense part as to where is he and the wondering part is over. But it's just the beginning. Every day, the family asks themselves, was it murder, suicide, or an accident? In spite of their continuing search for answers, the truth may never be uncovered.